Maybe instead of looking for a fundamental particle, we should start looking for a fundamental principle of division. We should start looking for a fundamental pattern of creation because if we understand the pattern, we understand the principle behind the identity, now we have the key to creation. The key to universal forces. I found eventually that the key was geometry. In a boundary is the possibility of infinite division. And thus, infinities and finite structures are complementary. If our universe is expanding, then there must be something contracting, there must be some compression happening in order to get expansion. There must be a feedback between the expansion and the contraction. And the fact that we could start to see the information feedback loop between the radiative side and the contractive side starts to open a whole new field of physics. So basically Einstein said, gravity is the result of space-time curving like the surface of a trampoline. What we say in this paper, yes, and when space-time curve, it doesn't just curve, but it curls, just like water going down the drain, and that generates spin. And that's the source of the spin of all things. Now, when you look in nature, you can see these dynamics. Taking these principles and applying them to yourself, you could start to visualize, you could start to imagine, you could start to experience that maybe within the confine of the finite structure that you're in is the potential of infinite division, the potential of infinite amount of information. You're transferring that information through your boundary to the infinite of the universe within yourself. Everything we see in the universe is just division of that energy density of the vacuum in various scales. The biological resolution is the link between the large and the small. You are the event horizon. Instead of seeing yourself as an insignificant little dot that means nothing to the universe, you start to see yourself as the center of creation. Everyone else is the center of their universe as well. And thus, we are all equal and we're all one. And this is the path of a test particle on the surface of such a black hole. This is the dynamics of the Coriolis effect. On the Earth, you find the same Coriolis effect. For instance, the weather has, you know, go, uh, the, the, the patterns of the weather goes down to the equator, gets hotter, and then goes back up to the North Pole and back down towards the equator and so on. And the one uh, from the South Pole goes from the South Pole to the equator and back down, creating this exact dynamic. And uh, I thought it was interesting, although I didn't mention it at the APS, that the view of these dynamics from above is a yin and a yang. Yang, and uh, in Yang, I'm sorry, and uh, galaxies and blazars. Uh, this is a galaxy. Galactic disk have uh, 3,000 light years vortices that emerge from the black hole at the middle. Okay, and they have huge galactic um, halos all around it. Can everybody see this? all around it here. And the stars move out from the galactic arm into the galactic halo and then back down and then back out. 
think that the Buddhist shows a vortex entering at the crown chakra and then entering at the root of the of the spine and then meeting in the heart center, reproducing that very dynamic. And when you look at the heart center of the Buddha where the vortex meet, it, the, there you find the geometry of the star of David or the geometry of the double star tetrahedron, the geometry of the vacuum, the singularity. So it's, uh, it's present in many, many different... There is a, a physical place inside your heart that has a singularity. Your heart has a little cavity between the two ventricular of the heart. And that little cavity has the highest electromagnetic field of your body. It can be measured up to eight feet away from you. And that's the battery of life that keeps your heart going. When you die, that singularity is no longer present. And I think that's one of the reasons that they're missing a bunch of weight that they can't account for that disappear when people die. The weight is the result of that singularity curving space-time creating a gravitational effect that we call weight. So here it is. Again, it comes out. Interestingly, in that temple, the Egyptians said was the foundation temple of, no, the myth that started the whole Egyptian mummification and so on was Isis and Osiris. Not one piece of writing. All there is is these things. There's a few of them. Some of them are chipped. Well, the laser burn is through the rock. So that actually, even if you chip it, it still appears on the rock. We have no current technology to reproduce this. A spherical intersecting pattern of the flower of life which generates 64 tetrahedron grid. Guardian of the knowledge. Uh, the I Ching. How many each in symbol is there? 64. Uh -huh. And remember now the yin and the yang we saw is a double torus. You'd be missing the geometry of the vacuum in the middle of singularity. But the 64 symbols of the I Ching gives you this. How? When I found this, I thought, oh, this is so sweet. <laughs> it took me weeks, took me months to actually figure it out. I knew there was 64, the 64 of them, and each of them are actually um, composed of full sticks and broken sticks. And each of the symbols are in opposition. So like 1 and 64, 2 and 63, they're all in opposition. And I realize, wait a minute, if you take 6 thick, um, you put them in 3D space. Which geometry would you get? Tetrahedron. A tetrahedron. That's the only geometry you can generate out of sti six sticks. But then why the broken sticks? Well, if you're following the code of the I Ching that tells you the sticks are in opposition, then you're going to need broken sticks. Watch this.